You know what the cruelest thing I ever did to anybody was? I'll tell you. So, Arthur goes for a swim. And I'm reading L.A. Noir, and it's the bit where the detective and the murderer meet at a deserted car park at midnight and the lights are off, so neither knows whether the other one is there. And Lucy's kind of being a Power Ranger. And the sun is gorgeous. I got my shades on, it's so bright. He comes back. The water is amazing, he says. And he dries off and I notice his feet and they're unusually battered and cracked. It's kind of one of those moments you rumble that he's a little old. Uh, and he tells me I can go for a swim. I do. And the water is amazing. I swim past the first bank, past all the seaweed, and I go out and out and out. Around the bay and the light. Oh, the light at that time on the Mediterranean is... <sighs> and the sea is warm. I turn around and I'm about 20 yards out and the sky is this huge blue curve and I can see all the houses on top of the road and I can see his house and I can see swimmers around the corner of the bay and I can see Arthur sitting, reading. He's reading some history of China. Um, he's really into it. The towel draped around his legs and water dripping onto his book. And I can see all this with real detail. And I can see Lucy playing behind him, running around a bit, playing Power Rangers. Um, and I can watch as she does a little bit of a jump. It, and it's odd because he's so into his book that he, does, he doesn't notice her lose her footing on the sand and the gravel of the rock. Um, and she slips and stumbles. And she's quite close to a little edge of one of the rocks there. So what she does is she tries to correct her balance. But in trying to correct the balance of her weight, she actually puts more weight onto her back foot, which slips out from underneath her. And it's weird to look at because she does fall off the edge of this six foot high cliff. And she falls backwards and cracks her head on some of the rocks that are jutting out from underneath the cliff. And I can see it all clearly, but I can't hear anything. And it's weird watching it with no sound. Like when the sound's off on the television, it's always a bit strange. So it takes a while to register before I swim back to shore. I'm not thinking. So I'm just swimming faster and faster, which is stupid because I'm panicky. And when you panic, you're not breathing properly. So I tell myself, concentrate on your breathing. And I can kind of watch him uh, in between strokes and I can see that he's thrown his book down and he jumps over the edge of the cliff. And there's one other couple that I didn't notice before that they stop their sunbathing and run straight to where she is. And I notice him pick her up. And he's torn between running back to the house to call an ambulance and waiting for me. I get there in enough time where he doesn't have to worry for too long. And I go to her and I take her from him. 
and there is what there is, which is surprising to me, is there is a handful of blood in her hair and it's matted and thick and her hair is all chewed up by it. I read that it's a process, that it doesn't happen instantly. The injury causes death to the brain cells, which stop sending signals to the lungs and bit by bit, the machine closes down. Her blood sticks to my hands.